So we are standing in what was, so this is actually, this is um, a tour of the past of the past. <laughs> Because the Jeffrey Museum is under construction at the moment. It's now called Museum of the Home. It's been un under construction for two years. So what we're seeing now is the history of the Jeffrey Museum, <laughs> as well as the history of the, the uh, theme of the museum. So, so we've got double history going on here today, which I think is actually quite kind of cool. It's just come to me. Um, so this, this is no longer, this is no longer. Um, so anyway, so we're still in the entrance. Uh, I don't know whether you um, have ever, have you guys ever been to the Jeffrey? Obviously, me and Jess worked there, but have you ever been before? No, I, I had the opportunity to go a couple of years ago, but I, I wasn't able to make it. So this is, this is quite a nice, uh, opportunity to finally see it yeah for me, i literally was looking up this museum i've got it bookmarked um for when lockdown closes for a visit because i didn't know about it so i'm right. really excited yeah so it's a tiny just give you a quick um before we walk through it's um it, it, old arms houses they were built by sir robert jeffrey in 17 now if i get my dates wrong today it's because i haven't done this for a couple of years so forgive me mm -hmm. um so Sir Robert Jeffrey, um, he was once upon a time Lord Mayor of London. In fact, he was twice Lord Mayor of L London. Um, when he died, he left the legacy. It was like the thing of the time um, for gentlemen of that stature to leave legacies of charity. So he had almshouses built in his name. So he had the elderly poor living in these almshouses and they're really beautiful. Um, there's a recreation of them at the Jeffrey, or um, I think it's still going. But I, I did all the tours, like um, the tours for them a couple of years ago, went through all with the tour guides. So um, so the museum closed down as an arms house um, in the 1900s, at the beginning of the 1900s, because it got too dangerous in the area of Shoreditch. So the, but the reason that the, muse, the building was saved, because there were other arms houses along the Kingsland Road where this is. Um, uh, you can kind of, I think you might be able to see at the bottom of the... Uh, bottom left of your screen you've got Hoxton can you see Hoxton station if you look at the map um, and um, so there's that yellow road going through that that is the road f like if, if you go um, south going straight into London and out and this area when Sir Robert Jeffrey built these arms houses was actually countryside all countryside and it's only really a mile away from the center the center of the city um, so so but in the 1900s the ladies that then were the elderly poor that they were all like ladies um, governesses they were moved out because the area around Hoxton Shoreditch was just so incredibly like look, criminal activity really really dodgy and the ladies were taking their lives in hands were literally walking out the gates um so then it it, it was like well what's going to happen because there were arms houses of, um along the kingsland road there were three in total two of them got knocked down the what two either side of the jeffrey but the jeffrey got kept because was kept because the gardens it was like the greenest space in the whole of um the area at the time there's beautiful gardens outside the front of the jeffrey so so anyway so um uh, they say it got saved um it was saved uh william de morgan um the guy uh, amazing lusterware tile designer he was one of the people that helped save it it was like the arts and craft movement and then it was made into um a museum so uh in 1904 if i'm if i'm right it was mm -hmm. like 200 years later thanks jess <laughs> um so so inside was other are um it's a story of home oh, no it'd be 19 i want to say because it would have been 100 years when we had the centenary celebration so it would have been um 1914 14 that's it yeah. it was 90 that's it thanks jess yeah 1914 that's right so in fact it was 1714 they were built there we go <laughs> So 1714, 1914, like I said, forgive me on the dates. So um, now the museum, as we go through, um, or then, <laughs> two years ago, the museum is about a chronological order of the, the history of home from 1600s through to, when I say modern day, it was like 1990s was the final room. It's set in the pitch of the middle classes. So it, they, it was decided to do, to do that because you can work historically either up, you know, upper classes, um, aristocracy, you know, working class from the middle class um, uh, standpoint. And, um, and the majority of 
uh, you've got to think of people like do doctors, merchants, lawyers, that kind of level level of living. So, um, and the, you know, very beautiful pieces of furniture recreated, um, recreating the living rooms. So anyway, we're stood in the entrance, or what was the entrance? So okay, should we should we go? Yeah. <laughs> are, we, are we interested? <laughs> okay, so let's do. Ooh, it's exciting actually. So. Uh, this is a chair gallery. The original, the original museum was about furniture because the local area was based around furniture making. So anyway, the first, so you went through this tiny, tiny corridor. It was very hard when you had to bring the arts and crafts trolley to the learning rooms. Um, what? And if somebody had to push chair, you had to go all the way back. <laughs> This is why the museum's been done now. They've got new ways of, like, they've gone down into the basements, they've gone upstairs. But it, it, but like Jess said, you know, you had to get everything down those corridors. You had school groups sitting in front of, you know, in the space here in front. So you're constantly squeezing past, you're constantly going, sorry, you know, but, but just intimacy, you know, the intimacy of it was always great fun. So this was the first room. Um, how do I turn this baby round? Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. So this is the first room, rec or was the first room recreation um, in the in the museum. It's um, uh, what can you see? <laughs> come on, throw. Come on. What's that on the mantelpiece? Those metal things. So, they? so they're um, they're uh, pewter plates. Um, so for uh, eating, but also one of the things that they um, used to do was use it to help ha light, bring light into a room. So the pewter was nice and shiny. Um, they're, they're really particularly fine examples. We had some in our handling cupboard that were a bit duller, but when the pewter was really shiny, um, it helped bring the reflection, reflection in the room. Well, that makes sense with where they're positioned. Would they have been positioned there as well? So the lights yeah. hitting and reflecting yeah from the fireplace which cool is, which is huge yeah is that it's yeah really nice axel anything take your interest uh i can't guarantee i can answer everything but <laughs> <laughs> um strangely one of the things that struck me is the grating on the windows bit of an old right. thing to pick up on but uh yeah yeah no 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 not at all if we would if i was doing tour guide training with you we would focus on that and you would do loads of research about it and then we would talk and talk about it because everything like whatever's interesting to people uh, it, it's bound to be interesting to the other um to somebody else it just that's the way i work so it's about subjective like working um and it's then you obviously you kind of do the hard facts like work on the hard facts mm. uh, as well as well as intermingling your interest but they um yeah they i i can't think of the name jess like uh, casement windows are they but they're ba basically the windows are tiny panes of glass i think are separate um to even have windows at this this time would have been uber expensive, ridiculously expensive. And this room is actually before the fire of London. So if you can see all the wood in the room and the small windows, um, yeah. imagine um, if you've either been to Shakespeare, um, sorry, Stratford upon Avon, or seen at Shakespeare Cottage. This is this is Shakespeare time. This is like, mm. um, you know, where when this is the way I think about it, like Shakespeare time. And um, and yeah, I can just kind of imagine him sat at the desk scribbling away so yeah so this is a um a room which is it's called a living hall a living hall and at this time uh the master of the house would be in the big chair like that would be saved for the big chair or the guest the special guest that came around and then you'd have the stalls around the table very nice piece of like heavy uh i'm thinking oak um, it's got to be oak furniture um and um you'd find that this this is where you know the servants would sleep in this 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 place as well um you know everything would go on in this room there's not really much privacy not for for the family the family and the servants like all working and living um together under um one roof and i think this is done in a way that downstairs is the shop if i remember um there, there would be a shop downstairs like a merchant's house and then upstairs you would have this um big living hall and as you can see you've got a huge great chimney um, huge great fireplace. Sorry, would they have eaten in this room? Is that a dining table as well? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's just imagine absolutely um, ev everything going on. And It's um, quite similar to kind of a contemporary open plan 
because that's a very similar arrangement to the one that we've got actually with a with a kitchen not through we're sort of all all living and you know working with our different laptops and computers well on washing day as well the washing would be hung up in this room if it was winter time it sometimes is, they've, they've is done that so, so well there we go you know it, it, yeah. <laughs> it's a, typ- a typical british british kind of all together all together scenario um mm. so so yeah so that's any anything else on that a oh, rush matting on the floor um which is amazing obviously no what i used to love saying then then there's no hoovers at this time and you can't really see it here but they used to have this um uh this spring it's got a pot called a sprinkler and it's made um made of like clay quite large um with little kind of holes in the top and the maids would um add rosemary to it and water and the rosemary would they would sprinkle the rush matting and that would help with any sort of fleas or um any sort of vermin it would kind of put them off it was like the early day disinfectant so so that that's um so no hoovers (laughs) Anything else? Look, is that a pot on the table, or is it yeah, an ornament? That's a Bellamine jug. It's um, right. it's a, a a beer jug. Um, I think it's a joke on um, well, Bellamine, the a priest. It, we used to again have one in the collection. I can't remember exact facts, but a Bellamine jug, and that's very very um, trendy. Trendy for this this time. It's a sign. It's a sign of the times. Cool. Okay, so let's go back. So let's carry on along the corridor. Uh, Oh, hang on, it's gonna start pressing the wrong things and they'll be like, what's going on? So here we go, squeezing past everybody with our trolley. Um, So this this room here, I'm not gonna talk about, but it's it's after the Fire of London, Um, just quickly, after the Fire of London, um, very, very different type of architecture. It's it's William and Mary. Since I've... um, I, I work at the Historic Royal Palaces as well, so I know quite a lot about William and Mary, um, as in King and Queen, who jointly ruled together. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to go into the next one because this. The next one is um, is really cool. They're all really cool, or they were all really cool. <laughs> It's really weird talking in the past. I'm I'm such a present and future person. <clears throat> um, so, are we okay? Can we all see this? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, pre- previously similar type of architecture. So, Stuart Stuart architecture, um, where you have the as you can see now the the even Axel with the bigger windows compared to your lovely ones that you liked earlier on, <laughs> um, and and like again. It, this is like a townhouse so you would have your merchant shop downstairs or whatever doctor practice or whatever it was and then this would you be living upstairs and mainly because it would um uh be quite stinky <laughs> in the streets so you lived up in the um the first floor to kind of get away from the, the smell um sorry to be graphic but that's kind of quite interesting i think i find um so so you've got these beautiful windows the the room before room two was green the green you had the green um uh, fabrics but here we've got like a new dye the red dye which is um become very fashionable and what i really love about this room is is that it's um it's there's loads of trade um things about trade in this room so I'm, oh so what you what's that thing in the corner that sort of is it a cup corner cupboard higher now, now this this is always um a fascination for people um it's a called it's called a japanned cabinet so so this whole room is about trade from all all over the world and a japanned cabinet it's not from japan the lacquer work originally it's actually a technique that was um created by i believe english craftsmen could be wrong so it's a long time um to create the same lacquered effect and inside uh, is the tea set that you see on the table. So the tea set on the table, um, uh, oh gosh, here we go. The Cow Mao tea set. Do you know anything about that, guys? Have you heard that before, no. the terminology? <clears throat> so there's this, there's this really famous story of this um, uh, merchant ship that sunk off the coast of Vietnam in play, near a place called Cow Mao and um it sunk with all of its wares and um 250 years ago ish 
and it was found by modern day divers and at the bottom for the haulage to, to help um, keep the ship stable they used to pack in all of the the crockery uh, and then the tea was above it the tea was above it in boxes so the tea had all had all dispersed obviously <laughs> so the the, uh, the fish had had a nice cup of tea when that went down mm -hmm. and uh, and all the uh, other surrounding animals and creatures but they found these tea sets and they had barnacles tiny little barnacles oh on them. wow and we had stroke have a collection in the uh, handling. So they are tiny little tea bowls. Originally, the, the, to show the fact that you've even got these in this middle class living room means that these people are very wealthy because they're buying tea. And let's imagine that this place is actually a tea merchant. That's how they managed to get hold of it. Um, so, so yeah, so it's tiny little tea bowls, no handles, green wow. tea in the, in the green tea would have been the original thing that they would have drunk very small amounts. Uh, and also I think uh, if I'm right, you can see the tea caddy here Can you see there's a tea caddy with a lock and key, which would have been kept by the, um, the mistress of the house, um, or the, the housekeeper, but that also would have been locked away in the Japan cabinet because it was super super ridiculously expensive and just to let, let give you an idea it would take roughly a year from the minute you went to the merchant they walked into the merchant shop downstairs to give get the tea for it to come from china to back back here again so you'd really have to not just do you know your asda delivery <laughs> you'd be <laughs> you've really got a forward plan <laughs> Wow, and would they would they have drunk the green tea just neat as it is? Because it's quite bitter, isn't it? it? Can be quite it's quite an acquired taste. Was that? Yeah, so it would have been it would have been like that. It was just and very. They, would they have put sugar in it or? Um, not no, not no. not as not as far as I know. Not as far. I think that that comes. It's again, sugar's very very expensive, being imported at this time. Um, I I. I'm not hundred percent sure, not hundred percent sure. Uh, but, but, um, but the dregs of it probably would have been drunk again and then drunk again. <laughs> and then, then it would have gone to the servants. So, so yeah, so that's a beautiful tea set and some little like petty four on the table as well that have been, been like probably sugary petty four. Um, but I think the highest of the highest sophistication would have been having it like completely pure and no, no additions. Um, what else? Uh, da, 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 da. The, the chair, oh, do you know what, I've said that, I've got all these wonderful things going on in these rooms and I'm thinking, what else? Well, that, the tea is the most, the most beautiful. The chairs are imported as well. I think they're mahogany. So they're, um, so they're imported too. Um, in fact, the, the, and the, like I said, the, the Japan um, cabinet, but I'm actually gonna bring in um, a little bit um, of a nod nod to slavery here because because um, the like all these things are coming from places where there were the colonies and in fact Jeffrey Sir Robert Jeffrey not that I ever really researched this but probably made some of his money in regards to slavery too so so we never really had a tour around that with uh, the Jeffrey but this this room would be a, a kind of a good representation a good representation of it at the time shall we move on Shall we move on? I was Let's... just going to. I was just oh, going to go say. On, go on, Gex. Oh, also, yeah. notice candles. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Yes. Um. So yeah, super, super, super expensive. You knew if you were in um a, a um a wealthy house as to what kind of candle that you would have had. So these are uh, beeswax candles, and um. So, but if you were in, um, if you couldn't afford the beeswax candles, then you would have made tallow, tallow candles, which was from um, sheep's, uh, sheep lamb's fat, or the fat, fat of an animal. Yeah. And I would say that even though they have these gorgeous ones here, it would be for visitors, they would still be using the tallow ones, um, you know, kind of in evening times because, because of it being super expensive at the time. And they used to use those candles in in the almshouses as well. That's right. That's right. So we 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 used to do. Uh, it's, 
uh, usually when I'm doing this tour, I have a whole of objects that remind me of everything as well. Um, <laughs> and, and it really like, we have got a tea caddy that you can have a look through. It's got usually two containers and a little mixer in the middle. And just thank you for Axel, because then we have two candles, the, the honey candle and then the tallow. And then I always get, get people to guess what they're made from. Um, so yes, yeah, so these people were definitely, definitely uh, uh, privileged. And you would, you would burn it, as you can see, this quite low. And, on some evenings, if they have like members um, evenings, if they had members of evenings at the Jeffrey, they would um, burn the candles uh, uh, for visitors to see what it's actually really like. And now you can see we have also like, there's mirrors, there's mirrors coming into play. We're starting to get the idea of identity and um, enlightenment, enlightenment. Just let can me I can this. I ask you about the mirror that's across the fireplace? Because that almost looks like it's been made is that is that was that what would have originally been there it looks um, like it's been almost made for that space uh i don't i don't know but they hmm. do a lot of the objects are originals okay they are originals and they um they it's they, it's, it, it's quite unusual isn't it it's it's absolutely stunning mm. but it's again for, for reflection like you said earlier with the pewter plates but it's um but also it's, it is for a looking, actually like a looking glass. Um, I'm just thinking, yeah, 1745. So this living room is 1745. So this, we're talking um, just when the British Museum is being built, which is another place that I work in. So this is the age of the enlightenment, very much so. People, merchants going out, buying stuff, things being ported in, kind of, I don't know why I've got oranges going on in my head now. <laughs> sugar everything is being imported <laughs> and that's it yeah the mahogany of the chairs that's coming from the um the the, the kind of colonies would also been imported with sugar so there's all sorts of things coming in from different different places so it would have been a good thing to do to do some sort of um talk around um uh, slavery with this room actually thinking about it but been a bit more con you know controversial and topical right shall i move on shall i move on and that's uh right so funny not walking <laughs> just even like walking and talking and not walking i find really weird because i use my body all the time mm. <laughs> this is one of the, my toughest lockdown moments at the moment <laughs> so there's a little chapel here so this is again an original feature of when they were almshouses and the residents who lived in the jeffrey museum would have to come to chapel every single sunday and there's this whole list of rules there was a chaplain that lived um, at the in the almshouses when it was and uh, and a matron as well that would look after the residents so it's like a, like a nursing home um uh, but with re religious connections and um so they would have to come and uh there was an even set of rules of you, you had to keep your place that you had like um comp so clean like religiously clean and there was no swearing if you got if you swore you there was fines you would have got fined um you really had to live uh, although you were living in a really beautiful space very lucky to be in this space there was lots of rules and regulations around around um being being in it but still the way it's painted it's absolutely stunning isn't it um yeah oh, just on the floor it's beautiful i know I know it's just so it's so gorgeous so so gorgeous right so we're gonna go that was the uh space where we had lots of books and art books and libraries and people would sit there and just hang out and we sometimes did I sometimes did storytelling in that room and all sorts of things going on so it's not it, it's more um specific so let's let's keep going let's keep going so now we're getting to the um Georgian uh era do I show you that yeah let's do it <laughs> Yeah, obviously I could talk. I haven't done this for so long. I just want to walk along the corridors. I used to walk along the corridors and I'd be so grateful that I worked there. I can't tell you. I just used to love it, the feeling of being there. So, um, so this is early, the early Georgian period. Um, and um, you've got lots of pairs of everything. It's about um, symmetry. So this is 1790. And um, so lots of um, kind of symmetrical uh, things. Um, can anybody see anything that they like? Uh, and I try and talk about it. <laughs> are, they, are they playing cards on the table or are they just? Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, they are. So, um, so yes, the family is set up to play, um, play cards and do a little bit of what I can see gambling, gambling in this room. <laughs> and, um, and they're having a little, little uh, tipple as well, a little <laughs> tipple as well. But you can see the, um, here you've got the pair, you've got the pair there. It's all about um, symmetry. Um, and that's it, the grand, the grand tour. This is like a reflection of when the gentlemen um, went on the grand tour. So they took, you know, went across Switzerland, France, um, uh, all the way to, to Italy and had the most raucous, fabulous times uh, and then came back with all inspiring ideas about what to do. So, um, so I'm thinking Palladian architecture, which is the front of the British Museum. You have the um, portico the, the, and, the, and the pillars. So that, that kind of Palladian style. So the height of fashion is the, um, the neo, neoclassicism, that's it at this time. Everything, everything's about that. Very rigid society, rigid rules, rigid society. Um, and, um, and, you know, you, you, you kind of play, play by it or, you, or you're out. <laughs> it's very, it's not, it's not one of my favorites. I'll, I can take you to my favorite. Um, anything else in? Well, just, here? just the, the, the wallpaper and the carpet, it's very striking. We've got so much more pattern suddenly, haven't we? That's, that's right. Yeah. It's more, we're, we're getting into more, um, decoration and design of the home, more luxurious, um, more luxury and, um, handcrafted, handcrafted things. I just love the curtains, you know, just, just, yeah. they're stunning, aren't they? And, and at the bottom you can see like some sort of, some sort of fringe in it's very, it's very, very beautiful and also very feminine this this room it's a very very feminine room um very it's very nice so let's carry on i'm not sure we're going to get through the whole we might get the um up until the 20th century it's it's quite interesting to see how much change has occurred since the first room where everything everything's very hefty all yes. the furniture is is huge it, it feels quite stuffy and then slowly things get a bit more ornate and delicate and a, a lot more open i think you're absolutely right um as you go as you go through time it feels like things are less harder to do or, or yeah uh, yeah no you're you're absolutely right and even in the home you know having the servants like living in with you or um you know at this point you're starting to get more separation of of um rooms um it's actually the the next the next room um because we're, like bedrooms aren't particularly a thing um let's just get this is this is it's my, also, also wow. more uh, yeah, evidence of leisure that's it didn't you, you didn't get any evidence of any leisure time really did you in the in the first room not not i think unless you're super super duper wealthy yeah yeah you're you're getting you've got your you know you have your gentle gentlewoman <laughs> you know they kind of earn so much money from their merchant businesses that they're they're not working they're working they're they're, they're gentlemen they're just you know work mm. no <laughs> <laughs> God, so, this oh, is amazing whole bygone era well this is it this is the this is the room as i walked down the corridor for my interview at the jeffrey museum this and i'd never been there before <laughs> i did a bit of research but i'd never been there before and i walked past this room and i'm just like bam <laughs> <laughs> oh look you can see the window from this angle because the window is gorgeous there we i really go. wanted to see that there we go there we go so so we are talking is that a chess set yes yes Wow. It, this, this is that's why I didn't talk so much about the last room because I love it, but it's just too it's too a bit too stuffy for me. It's like oh my gosh, I wouldn't want to be in that space. The the picture of the woman in the wall in the last room, she's got a mantua on the big the, the huge dresses. You know, you can't move. It's just mm. everything is just completely mm. rigid. But this just is much more relaxed. I think it's eighteen twenty you know you can actually breathe in this room um uh so yeah so silk beautiful silk curtains this is about interior design this is about interior fashion 
the hand painted printed wallpaper, um, the color blue at this time, this was the fashion, the Regency blue. Um, the chess set also turns into a sewing table. So you've got this furniture that maneuvers itself around and you can tell how excited I am about this, can't you? You can tell. <laughs> well, I love some, but mm -hmm. the, the furniture create, you know, you've got a chess set that then turns into a sewing box underneath. So there's like multiple uses um, of everything going on. And there we go. That's better. It's a better, um, a better a look. You've got the um, fire dogs in the fireplace again, like stunningly decorated. Um, the mirror is like con convex. So, uh, and again with the lights but it's just i want it it's stunning i love all this <laughs> light and, and then on the sofa oh, a little footstool footstool you've got um can you see mr darcy on the sofa right now because for me he's there <laughs> he's there i'm taking a turn around the room <laughs> and uh, just adjusting the curtains <laughs> It's a bit like the um, uh, the Sex and the City series where where um, Mr. Big is on this, his sofa and Jessica, uh, you know, uh, what's her name? Carrie's like walking around adjusting things. That's how I imagine it. <laughs> modern day. I always bring it up to modern day. <laughs> so beautiful. Oh, yes. And also absolutely stunning. Not going to touch anymore. Is, um, but up here you've got silhouettes. So this silhouettes just love, 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 love silhouettes. And I actually did a workshop based on silhouettes once where I had um, a projector and a, a light and then children like projecting their image onto um, the wall, drawing it, cutting it out. Um, and then I also did another one where silhouette cutters, where you just literally have a friend sat opposite you and you um, and you cut the, the profile of their face really quickly. And there's only, I think when I did the research, this is a while ago now, there's only like five actual professional silhouette cutters in the country that go to like have weddings and we'll sit there and do do this so we challenged ourselves to get it to get it right i always ended up with a really like bit, doing big noses on people i can't help it <laughs> but it's just absolutely I, for me this era probably because of jane austen it, it's just so alive so alive for me I love gorgeous it. isn't it yeah absolutely i think it's beautiful um so and then we have um do, 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 do. the victorian room so early early victorian so we've got elizabeth uh, sorry elizabeth victoria there um in all her her beauty and her glory um but now we're talking very different <laughs> what what to, how, how do we feel about this room it's sort of clashing colors isn't it it's all coming at me <laughs> I mean it's only only the walls that save it really isn't it <laughs> <laughs> the theory behind oh look at that you can even see the dates at the bottom I didn't need to worry think about the dates I shouldn't have had the disclaimer 1870 there we go so actually yeah it's fairly early Victorian um uh mid-Victorian the reason one of the reasons behind the clash and the colors and the like the beauty of the 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 room before and then now we've got like everything in your face mm. is is apparently according to the industrial revolution so in so these middle class living rooms are all based in london so the idea of them um dealing with this progression happening at such a rate that the Victorians wanted to add every single thing that they could think of from nature into their homes. Mm. So it's almost like a case of suddenly like dealing, like psychologically dealing and coping with this living in this, in London at this time where everything is expanding. So just behind the museum, there was the, uh, we've got, had the railway, so that was coming in. It's really nice. So we stood there. I could explain. So you've got the Kingsland Road, like I said, if you can see at the bottom. You've got literally the railway behind the museum. And then just if you carry north up the Kingsland Road, walk about 10 minutes, you've got the canal. So you're actually surrounded. When we stand in the museum, that's what I love, that kind of experiential feeling. We stood there surrounded by the Industrial Revolution and lots of factories in the area of Hackney too. 
so yeah so i can i can kind of see why there's you know the carpet's flowery um the the, the chairs are flowery um you know everything like uh, everything is just kind of flowery curtains <laughs> it's just it's just that need to grip onto the feeling of being natural i suppose well that's one one of the reasons one of the reasons i was, I was just going to say um that's one. Of, that's one of the things I found found find most interesting about looking at things like this. It's the changing idea of what nature is, and you compare it to the first room. There's a real sense that they're kind of shuttering themselves away from something awful outside, really. Um, yeah. Whereas, you know, when when we reach the industrial revolution and it, things start to take off in in the urban setting, uh, nature becomes something ideal, something that you want to get back to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. In um in the first room at Christmas, they they have a a yule log. They put a yule log in there, which you would have burnt for all of the days of Christmas, and all of their beautiful outdoor um like ivy and mistletoe is brought in. Yeah. By by this point, um, they you would have had the Christmas tree, and it would have been on the table, and it's the first time it was introduced. Uh, so it's a much more, yeah, kind of organised um, organisation of nature. Yeah. In comparison to, like you said, the first, the first, um, the first rim. Yeah. It, it's also got a less formal feeling. So I want to say cosy. It's kind mm. of cosier than 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 the previous rooms, but it's kind of it's an it for me. It's just like completely overdone. You know, you kind of yeah. It's, it's just, it's kind of a little, little bit hoarder. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but, you know, that's kind of, we think of that as a negative term, but, but it, um, but it, well, it, it is really, it is actually, and um, that's Victoria there. That's Victoria. Um, and these are amazing. These are uh, nature domes. I've did many, many um, um, arts and crafts sessions with, uh, about nature domes. So again, you're encapsulating nature into a glass case. And there's, there's two reasons for that. One, because of dust, and you would have the, these new, uh, the gasolier, so the gas lamps are coming in at this point, rather than, and candles too. So that would cause a whole, caused a whole load of like blackened soot on the ceilings. This, was, this room would have been a heck to clean. Um, and, uh, and then, so you're to dust, but then also just the encapsulation of, of nature and quantification. I'm thinking like Charles, Charles Darwin. Um, so these are actually little birds from South America, tiny, tiny little birds in this one here. And then there we've got like uh, different um, dried, dried flowers. It's very much about capturing it all, sticking it into something and then claiming it as yours. <laughs> I suppose that's the empirical thinking, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just what's and is it is it the first time we've had a musical instrument in the room is that a piano um uh no not not first time not first okay. time there was um uh they they have i think there was something in the a violin in the room too but oh, we just okay. didn't see it um but 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 um but yeah playing the piano being accomplished the ladies you know sewing you know it's all about accomplishments um so so yeah so very very nice very nice and then anything else on this room so so much <laughs> i almost just want to get out <laughs> if i had to, if i'd ever had to go on lockdown in this room i think i you'd go crazy it, wouldn't you the one before, in fact let's ask a question just so far which room would you have gone on uh if you could be in lockdown in one of the rooms we've seen so far which one would you be in <laughs> definitely the one before that was yeah, I'd go in but, the one before the one before the one before with the white curtains. Jess, yeah, I know my favourite's the next room. Right, okay. Oh, well. <laughs> can, I just, can I just say one yes. thing? Is that the fireplace is tiny in comparison? Yeah, it shrunk, hasn't it? Coal. Oh, I'd say go. I'd say coal. Mm -hmm. Because you can get a, like a fiercer fiercer flame. Mm -hmm from coal whereas with wood with wood you you um you need a lot more you need more bigger space this is literally just popping into my head as i'm talking so whether that's if there's any fireplace scientists out there who's going to watch this they can they can comment and then we can learn <laughs> <laughs> um i'm no i'm no expert 
on fireplaces, but I find it all fascinating. Right, okay. So this is the last room um, of the 20th century. I uh, do you know what? I'm, there we go, there we go. But Jess, go on. Why don't you talk about it if this is your fave? I just like it because I like the arts and craft movement and it's very arts and craft. Go on, tell us a bit more. Well, that's all I really know. I like the forest designs and I like the um, tiles on the fireplace, but I don't really know anything about any of the objects in this in this room. It. What about you guys, Sonia, Axel, what do you think of this one? It's, it's still Victorian, but late Victorian, really late Victorian. Well, I like, I like the, um, I don't know how to, how to describe it, almost the border that's underneath the skirting on the, on the ceiling. That's very nice. Yeah. Um, and it, it seems a bit more uniform as well. It works with the curtains, for instance, rather than clashing with them. Yeah. It's, it's like moved. It's like the, the Regency style and grace. The, the room before then the victorians of everything together and then suddenly like the next stage has been refined this yeah room. um you've still got a lot going on but it, it it just feels like it's got more um i don't know it's hard to say without offending because like obviously that room before has a lot of thoughtfulness gone into it but but this just appeals to personally my sense of style and taste um it, and william morris the, the was it never have anything that's not beautiful or practical that's not the exact quote i know but but th that's what this is about you choose the right things to be in your home and everything is beautiful and but also like um, um, and and all practical at the same time and i love i love the idea of that and like you know just said the cut you know the colors it just all matches it matches it feels comfortable um there's a lot of oriental um orientalism in here too so um lots of um nod nods to the orient uh, i'm just trying to see if there's anything and also this is a beautiful um arabic like chair kind of moorish um chair uh, not chair um table there as well so in that if you can imagine in the houses um the with this room for me the gentleman has a, a long smoking jacket on and he's got one of the little the little kind of hats the 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 moorish style hats i'm not talking of fez although some did and they would be smoking a really really big pipe <laughs> are we thinking sherlock holmes <laughs> <laughs> I'm always thinking, I'm always <laughs> thinking Sherlock. So yeah, I think, I think so. It just has that extra, extra beautiful edge um, and, um, and uplifting like the carpets and yeah, it's, it's just stunning. It's absolutely stunning. This was the restaurant. Keep going through. This was like the new wing. No, don't want to go that way. I want to go that way. New wing. Okay. Right. This is Edwardian, Edwardian room. And yeah, okay. Uh, this is over here, the living hall. So, um, no, the, the, is it the living hall? No, it's the hallway. So when you, when you come in, it's huge. It's like a room of itself. Um, this, this building is Queen Anne style. So again, like Jess said, art, the arts and crafts style. Um, so you walk in, you've got a whole hallway. There's even, you can't see it, but there's even a fireplace in there as well in the hallway. So you're getting yourself, you're coming out from the outside. Um, oh, that's right. Just quickly, what I was going to say back to the aesthetic is that um, it's like nature has come back into play again but in a, in a beautiful way, in a, in a respectful way, like William Morris, that's how he worked. He was all about, you know, having nature inside the home as well, but not in such a way that the Victorians, um, you know, had done previously. And this is the same. It's like a real nod and a real respect for nature. So, so you're walking in, you've got this gorgeous, great space. You're kind of shaking your coat off if it's cold and rainy um, and you're getting yourself like ready to go and you're greeting people in the hallway. Whereas Victorian houses, you traditionally were really tiny little corridors going through at the beginning um, uh, when, you, when you walk in. 
Um, and then you've got the, you know, the idea of the big chair, the big chair again. You've got the Arabic style fireplace, which is like this gold, stunning, lots of nods to the Arabic aesthetic in this room, which I love. Um, you've got your windows again, Axel, that kind of casement style that's really f it's going to go on about your windows <laughs> could be your expertise you never know yeah yeah know. um lead lead you know lead um whatever it's called uh, lead lead tracing no some, may, mm, don't know i was gonna say piping but that's cluedo so yeah it's a be beautiful this lovely plate on the fireplace which is really nice the color of the green of the gold you got this and and if you um I don't know whether you've ever seen the film Room of the View, which I watched the other night. So the Edwardian era is very much the Belle Epoque, like a lot of money before the war, um, the First World War. I mean, real luxury beyond luxury. Downton Abbey, you know, just servants, masters. Um, uh, this this always makes me think of the dresses, the, the actual, the um, uh, the lampshade is the same as the outfits. <laughs> So I would imagine wearing that. It's just so fabulous and the fringing coming off it. Um, and again, we've got nature, but but nature done in, um, this is uh, Art Nouveau, so Art Nouveau style. So you've got tulip lights, um, but it's just tasteful. It's just very, very tasteful. Lots of green, like the plants. Um, and this rug, actually, I remember because I did used to storytell in this room a lot, uh, Albert the Mouse story. It's really cute. I used to love storytelling in this room. I just have to be really careful um, because I gesticulate a lot. And uh, and then the rug, this is actually a, an original Irish rug. So I'd have to put like um, these cloths down before I started storytelling just to protect it. But um, but yeah, very, very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. So that's... Um, So this is the idea of a pied-à-terre, 1930s. So um, after the First World War, before the Second World War, and um, absolutely gorgeous art deco, art deco design. So you've got all the different, um, the kind of graphic design on the, on, like, on the carpet, the graphic shapes. Um, Technology is coming in more. There's central heating in this room. It's all the that all the latest mod cons. Tiny little kitchen here. Um, they haven't got the cocktail bit set up, but cocktails starting to get cocktails at this time. There's a Hollywood magazine on the table. Um, beautiful Hollywood style. Um, this is German actually, but um, like figure a face on the wall. The polar bear. People always talked a lot about the polar bear. Really cute. <laughs> Um, you've got the wireless, you've got the, um, the gramophone, uh, even telephone, there's a telephone there too. So it's really very much, this is your London residence um, and you've got it all, you've got it all there at your fingertips and you know, you don't really eat much at home, you don't really host much at home, you're out of the town at the jazz clubs and um, having, having a gorgeous time. Actually, that's kind of my era too. <laughs> my yeah. favourite favourite room so far, I think. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It is, isn't it? Again, mm. you just it's done. It was, it was done so well that you could just literally rock up and live in the room. That's how clever this is. Okay. Oh wow! <laughs> I, I revised my view. This is now my favourite. This is my new favourite. <laughs> um, I love it. But then it's I've, oh, it, do you see do you see that round table with the chairs? Yes. I'm sitting on one of those chairs now. No way. That I got for ten pounds in the local charity shop. Oh man. I'm not kidding. It, those, I'm sitting on it right now. I that have it. It's, is it, so I, I, I bring, I, it's so handy because I can bring it up and down the stairs to do my <laughs> my video calls upstairs. It's stunning, isn't it? And the the way yeah. that they fit in around that table. I know. There's, six chairs and that's not a big table it's it's real it's a scandinavian design we're talking early Ar ikea <laughs> although the designers it. at this point would be like you know <laughs> that it's all been made modern and everyone's you know everyone's able to have it but um but yeah just just atomic design so we've got space race going on here uh we've got the ufo um lampshade 
that one of our lovely um, volunteers, Sonny, used to talk about. He was, it was, that was his special topic. Great tour. He used to talk a good half an hour about that lampshade with all sorts of things included. Um, we've got the beautiful, can you see the phone there, which is very iconic um, uh, phone style um, that I had growing up. Um, the, the tapering of the chairs, like a rocket coming down, like really, um, really small. What else? The wood, the cleanliness, like the, the possibility there's no cleaner or no daily coming in anymore. Whereas the previous one, you would have had the, the, the daily come in to help have a little clean, even though it's not that big a place. Whereas this very much, you know, you're starting to get rid of the idea or the need for servants. So, um, so this is about cleanliness and um, light and bright. It's got like double height ceiling idea. Um, yeah, what what do you think? What do you think? When can I move in? <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. It's totally, totally the kind of you know style I would if I could afford. Oh, look at that telly! Oh my goodness! Oh wow! Gorgeous. <laughs> I thought you might be into that, Axel. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the first designs. So the first TV um, broadcast was 1953 for the Queen's coronation. Um, so that this is a later model, something star. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Um, and we we had um, so we used to talk about that, and we had all like Radio Times and um, magazines and things to do with the coronation, which was really really cool. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good time. It's a good time. It's a good era. And, um, and a lot of, a lot of the generation, the slightly older generation that used to come to the Jeffrey, if we were doing um, different tours, uh, they would really relate to this room because, because a lot of the furniture, a lot of the style is the style that they lived in. And this mm. here, this is a lack called the Ladderack, Ladderack system. And this is, so expensive but it's so beautiful I always like covered it online I really, <laughs> I really want the ladder rack and then you can get ones where the, there's a desk and it folds out it's just cool it's just really really cool still it still speaks now like I think it will always speak it's that kind of that kind of era that kind of furniture and it, it's really interesting because it's so light and airy and it's a bit like you know the, the whole nature the relationship to the domestic in nature that we've been talking about this is like sort of the feels like the ultimate pairing down of that yeah. and there's still there's still nods to it in terms of the materials and the colors yeah but it's very very minimalist now isn't it it's just we've got just the plants, gorgeous the plants going yeah. on again we've got the we've actually got urns on the um i think they're cypriot urns on the curtains interestingly so we've got another nod to classicism there it's all that all that kind of all the different natural woods that are on display it's not it's not just all uniform is it it's lots of different examples of that's right amazing and then finally finalmente we have the very cool kind of urban urban loft space it's got the rothko um very new york um but you can look how cool is this you've got your kitchen under you know I'd, i'm sure the bed would get hot <laughs> 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 yeah. but so so cool like 19 um 90s style so it's very even now i, I love looking at architectural digest which is a youtube um they have youtube videos where you can look and when i see the new york loft spaces it's just so so cool and that is very much hackney so this is based on um hackney but you've got if you see the tv you know and you've got the vhs you, you can you can look at it and think oh modern but then you start to really look at it and go no hang on a minute <laughs> i think then, any um any like early 2000s cooking program seems to be based in this exact kind of kitchen <laughs> area kind of setup. <laughs> what, what, would you so class, true. what would you class as an early two, 2000? What, what programs? Uh, there's, so if you go on like, uh, I can't even remember what it's called now, but it used to be called UK TV Food. It's called something else now. Um, and you'd see like Nigel Slater in one of these kind of, <laughs> Usually making some those. kind of some kind of fusion cuisine type thing, and uh, yeah, 
those those chairs in particular seem yeah, really, the chairs. really evocative of it. Yeah. Um, Do you know what? I actually, I actually don't like this room at all. I find it very um, a bit clunky. I feel like it's kind of the, uh, we've lost the elegance. We've, we've got the minimalism, but we've lost the mm. elegance to me. It's sort of like just a bit, I don't know. Yeah. I see, I it's a see bit cold. Exactly what you mean. It just feels feels cold and clunky and not very attractive, even though there's loads of space and light and all the rest of it. I also think it's quite strange how sometimes stuff that's more recent can seem much more dated. Yes. Because it's totally only slightly that. out. Whereas like the, the one from the interwar years with the kind of Bauhaus, you know, modernist mm. stuff, that looked a lot more futuristic. This totally seems, agree. Yeah. That's fascinating, isn't it? I love the I love the chair. The the this chair here is a Balzac chair. I think it it's like a couple of thousand pounds. It's really and, and it's so comfortable. They I think that's a, that's on its gallery. own. That's on its own would be fine. I think it's the it's the rest of it is the sofa and the and the and the shelving and the oh. it's friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Love, I Axel, I absolutely love Nigel Slater. He's one of my absolute heroes. And the fact that you brought that up, I, I some of those programs when they come when they come on. I I'm yeah. and with Nigella there too, and he's yeah. got a couple of other chefs that I now follow that are back in the day and just really cool. Just so yeah. so amazing. Um, you're so you're so right. I didn't think I'd be bringing that up. <laughs> no, I love the fact you did. That's brilliant. It's so so relevant. Um, yeah, this is also a very famous piece of art. Um, I'm just thinking. It's got, I think it was called Flipper. I think just that's really recalling um, my memory. But this table, like it's got like Flipper or fins. It's a very 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 cool piece of furniture. This up here, it's. Um, Japan style, Japanese style, where it folds out into um, uh, a ch either a chair or a table. So it's that kind of, uh, you know, furniture that morphs, metamorphosizes. Mm -hmm. And again, like you, see, you can see, you've got the kitchen and there's the dual lit toaster, um, you know, all of that, all of that kind of stuff that, that we still, we still know, know and love now. Oh, and the wireless phone with a wireless phone. <laughs> If you brought children into this room when we did school sessions and you start showing them all the old technology, uh, you know, they've never seen a CD. Um, it is, and you show them the big mobile phones. We had those in the handling cupboard. It's really good fun, really, really good fun to, to get those um, things talking. Yeah, yuppie, there we go, like wall, wall street, wallpaper. Yeah, all sorts of things. So yeah, okay, that's it. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so mm. shall we go for a cup of coffee now? <laughs> 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 should we, look, this is nice. Should we take a little seat or do we want to sit over by the window? <laughs>